Today is Friday, November the 24th, 2023, and welcome to episode 71 of Rural Reliance with the Candy Couple. I'm Julia. And I'm Erin. We're a small homestead family in rural Southwest Virginia that work every single day on being more self-reliant, more self-sufficient, and merging homesteading with frugality to live the life we want to live. Yeah, yeah, and you know, as we talked about last week, you know, we talked about the importance, importance of self-reliance. And this week, we're going to, you know, infuse that with frugality and why it's a part of self-reliance. So for us, something we have noticed over the past few years is we were not merging our natural frugal tendencies with our homesteading. We're just trying to build this homestead as quick as possible. Homesteading was get it done now, no matter the cost, instead of... You know, looking at it from the frugality standpoint. Absolutely. Which caused us to make some mistakes. Yeah. It really did. It really did. We should have looked at this a different way. And now that we are (laughs) hyper-focused on our frugality lifestyle, we have really been looking to merge frugality and homesteading. And that for us also means taking self-reliance and making it a principle of of frugality. Yeah. It's already part of homesteading, so now we're going to make it part of frugality. How do we merge these two together and make sure that us being self-reliant is also going to keep us from spending money and also saving money in the long run? Do you have any? I would say that, um, you know, you might not think it's true, but when you start looking at it, you know, there's so many benefits, you know, being self-reliant from the frugality standpoint. And I would also say a lot of people think they're being frugal. This is where we realized we were making a massive mistake. Start putting those numbers on paper. Yep, yep. See what you're actually spending, spending you know, keep up with your... Keep, keep track of everything, you know, like from a budget standpoint, like we've talked about before. I can tell you, since we've been hyper-focused on the budget, homesteading was an area where we had a lot of fluctuations. It's been pretty consistent now. We are very <laughs> consistent now. We are staying right at our, our homesteading budget. We are hitting that mark and not going over or anything like that. So, I mean, we've really kind of narrowed down and honed in on this to really make sure that we are hyper-focused on this because of our future goals. Because us being debt-free is not just going to help us personally, It's going to give us the ability to put more energy and effort into the homestead, more focus into the homestead, because we don't have something on our back telling us, hey, knock, knock, you don't really own your home. Right, exactly. (laughs) The bank owns your home. So just something to think about. A lot of people think they're naturally saving money, and they're not. They're not because how much money are you spending on all those fertilizers or everything else? How much money are you spending on water? If you're not using rainwater, if you're using electricity to have to run your well pump, these costs, while they might seem minimal, will really start to add up. Yeah, yeah. And as long as the energy companies keep upping the price of providing you energy, it makes it even harder. I would say this year has been really eye-opening for us. Once we started getting that energy usage and we could see, it really changed everything for us. Yeah, yeah. We've, um, you know, started looking at everything from a different perspective. And so the first, one of the big reasons why we feel like um, self-reliance is a part of frugality, it's a principle of frugality, is going to be skills and learning how to do things for yourself. Now, does that mean we do everything for ourselves? No. But we try. We absolutely try. We know our limits, and we try to grow past those limits every day. Yeah, yeah, and it's so easy to learn skills these days from YouTube, from online free courses that you might get a you know introductory offer for or something, you know, or neighbors, neighbors, friends, or family, libraries. True, true, and this is any skill you think is going to be beneficial. Mm-hmm for you in your life, your home, your homestead. If you don't know how to cook, (laughs) you can Google anybody teach you how to make rice. 
And it, like, anybody will show you, here's how you make rice. And you can learn how to make rice. I can even make rice. He can. <laughs> I, I, because I have told him how to make rice. Yeah. I send him the instructions. <laughs> here's what you do, step for step. And you could find these resources that a lot of people didn't have. So if you felt like you were deficient in an area, you have 100% capability to change that. You absolutely do. If you want to learn how to do a skill, to cook, to sew, to knit, to crochet, whatever it is you want to do. Those are just skills I'm thinking about. I'm also thinking small engine repair, um, using hand tools, like a lot. Yeah. Like when we first started, we had no idea. I, I mean, I, you know, I'd use stuff, play around with it, but, you know, nothing to officially build anything that I expect to last yeah, we we had no idea how to really use the things we had, but we learned, and we learned by trial and error, by getting out there trying to use it. We couldn't figure it out. We looked on Google. We watched videos to figure out how to do it. It's how we also learned like things that are hard to put together. Our greenhouse, the door oh, was a nightmare. So anybody has a Harbor Freight greenhouse, you have to about uh, uh, YouTube it to see how to even make it stand up after you buy one it was the door the door was a big issue for us the mm. door was the hardest part I maybe mean, it was so frustrating um but we were able to find a really good video a really good tutorial and we were able to use that to actually get it built so don't discount you you could tell if it's going to be good or not you should be able to identify what's good or not. But what this is going to do is as you start to do it, and you do more and you learn more. You're building your skill set. You're building your ability to do these things for yourself, for your family, on your own. Yeah. There's so much power in that knowledge. Yeah. Not, knowledge is everything, you know. And that's everything. why that's why we have a book sinking fund is for things like this to, you know, make sure we have some of these skills backed up in paper already starting the baby's homeschool library yep. <laughs> i mean i go to ollie's we look at workbooks if it's a really good deal and i have a coupon i'm grabbing a couple workbooks yeah. um just so we could start building on that knowledge we're doing it at a cost effective way for us and it's going to help us in the future so knowledge is knowledge is power that and that's one of the things in this world most people discount so much because they think they know. Because they've been told you are smart. You no. are smart. You know. And they're not that they're being told. The, the, the old skill sets, the skill sets you need from a self-reliant standpoint are something that, no, aside. that nobody is teaching anymore. They don't want you to know how to take care of yourself. No. They don't. They want you to call Hello Fresh to send you a nice little thing of food. It tells you, you know, already pre portioned and ready to go into the oven. You know, for a few hundred bucks or for something. For a few hundred yeah. bucks. Like, that's what they want. Like, that, it, it's almost enslaving in a way. Not empowering yourself to get that knowledge that you need. I mean, it's like, okay, nope, nope, we want you to focus on this here. We want you to work here. We'll take care of this other part, your basic needs. You don't need to know how to take care of yourself, your basic needs. Yeah, yeah. I've read, an, I don't remember where it was the other day, an interesting one that was talking about we actually produce less food now than we did in early 1800s from a U.S. perspective. Which is scary. It and really look is. how many more people we've got. Oh, way more people. I mean, look at the cities. I mean, there's an exodus out of the small towns to the cities, at least in our area. Yeah. You start seeing more people coming this way, but at least in our area, you're seeing a lot of people who are leaving the small town to go to the city because yeah. it's but, what they're told but to But, you do. know, a lot of that, too, might not be looking at your backyard grower. You know, how much is that person producing? How much, you know, are they keeping for themselves? It probably, you know, is probably based off a of statistic back then that said, you know, everybody produces their own food and they produce this much. I mean, that it, could be true. That it, could be very true. It, it's hard to do that type of calculation. It is. It, it, it is. You make you wonder, how. what are they looking at for that? Right. Or, or were they even looking at the or whole they, producer? Or were they just looking at imports and exports? Very interesting. Um, 
Self-reliance is naturally lends itself to save you money if you do it right. <laughs> you gotta do it right now. <laughs> They'll just think, okay, I'm gonna put out all these trees and it's gonna save me so much money because it won't. <laughs> yeah. Especially when you don't do your work on these. <laughs> yeah. Lesson learned. Lesson learned. And they will eventually save us a lot of money. But it is a slow, long-term mm -hmm. project that takes years and years and years. It's a long-term investment. It's a very long-term investment. And we knew that going in. But we were expecting like four to five years. And we are actually, for some of our trees and plants, we're actually at that mark where they mm -hmm. are starting to produce. Until a frost hits. Right. It takes out the hundreds. Of blooms. Of yeah. blooms that I had on my apricots. Yeah, it'd been nice to see though. Oh, Maybe be... next year. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Um, so it's naturally going to lead you to financial independence if you do it right. Um, think of your garden. So for us, we have a very, we've talked about this, and we'll probably show you more of this later. We really like to have a very hands-off form of gardening. Mm -hmm. um, we do this with our trees as well. I know there's a lot of cultivators that would really disagree with us, but we're very old school and a lot of times seeds fall to the ground a little seedling comes up a tree pops up so we tr try to not hinder nature as much as possible right. try to let nature take its course yes trees we probably don't have as good of a success rate as a lot of other places but it's more natural we also don't try to manipulate the tree as it grows now with gardening i like hands off i really do i want it to just do its thing I want to be able to walk through the garden without it being too weedy. But after a certain point, I really want to let the garden kind of handle and maintain itself. We don't like to water. Unless we absolutely drought. have to. Yeah. I mean, we absolutely have to. Like there have been years where we've maybe watered twice in a drought. Yeah. Um, and we didn't get as good of a harvest. We did get some, but not as good of a harvest. But it's just our approach. We really try to let these plants thrive on their own. And as we're growing more in our seed collecting and seed starting, we're hoping that's going to produce a stronger crop that can handle the weather patterns for us. Yeah, especially, you know, having a lot of seeds that come from our plants that's been in this soil, in this zone, etc. Yes, yeah, so tomatoes, like I can tell you, tomatoes, we hardly ever touch. The one thing that we do tend to give a bit of water to is lettuces. Lettuces, mm, yeah. we do tend to water. And, and, and we seem to, a lot of times, have to, didn't have to this year, is the potatoes, make sure the potato bugs don't get to them. Yeah, where we put them this year. And I also think what helped was the grass mm -hmm. mulch, which we'll be adding way, way more of this yep. next year because it, did amazing for them um they were not weedy it just worked really well if we could get enough grass mulch to put in our actual garden we would go that route but our real i mean i don't think it would happen it's it's a lot that we would have to have but we really try to have this hands-off approach so it's less work for us and it's also less cost it also includes fertilizer we've talked about it we used very little fertilizer this year we had an amazing garden yep and, and, and you know if you make your own make your own compost make your own you know compost teas anything like that you know make your, own make your own biochar you know anything like that that you can do um you know saves on your garden and you know makes it more frugal absolutely so you're not spending that money for that organic fertilizer you're trying to make it yourself and go forward in the way you want to in a more frugal lifestyle but definitely the hands-off i mean we're all about <laughs> like i think i after we put it in the ground i did not fertilize but one other time that was it right yeah that was it one other time um it also having all that extra produce for us is very cost effective because <laughs> that's, that's our winter meals that stuff we're putting up that stuff we're canning dehydrating freeze drying etc you know to provide for meals for through the winter and stuff you know basically think of it like um you know back in the olden days when you're putting up your harvest for the, the winter, winter. And that's really what we focus on. We don't just focus on fresh eating. We focus on 
I, I really put more focus on foods I'm going to preserve versus fresh eating. Yeah. We yeah. do eat some of it fresh, but we don't eat as much of it fresh as we put up. Yeah. I probably say we would eat what, like a fifth of it fresh, mm. if that. that. That might be a good About representation. A fifth. So four fifths of this goes <laughs> up for the next, you know, till till the, the, the till the ready, next crop ready next year. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a long time. It's a lot of food we try to preserve. So we don't have to buy vegetables at the grocery store. I don't have to buy potatoes. I don't have to get these things. So that's cost savings for me. Yeah. Now, we live in an area where a farmer's market is not cost effective at all. Period. No, no. You know, you can think of, um, you know, larger, well, not larger cities, but, you know, medium-sized cities, farmer's market. The local type of farmer's market you have is, you know, everybody ups their prices there as well. Um, you need to be, you know, out in the Midwest probably, uh, you know, from some of the large farms setting up some roadside stands, et cetera, you know, to um, be more cost effective. I've seen the auctions where you can get a huge oh, amount of food. Now, now, that would be wonderful. Now, that could be cost effective. The Amish auctions. Yes, I've seen a lot of I'd be all up into that. <laughs> I'd be doing that all day long uh, because that can be very cost effective if you know your price and you know if it really is going to be more cost effective for you to go that route versus growing it yourself. Or if you are tight on, like you don't have a place to grow. If you live in an apartment or a townhouse and you are at HOA, you are regulated and you can't grow your own food. This is a good option for you. There's, you know, look at the green stock vertical garden things, yes. you know, if you're in um, HOA or an apartment, you know, you can, put, you can put these these things at least on your decks, you know, or your back patio or something like that and be able to grow a little bit of food. That tree, there's a squash that Baker Creek has it. That's tree squash. If you like squash, this might really be a good option if you are small space. It's supposed to grow up in like a tree. Ours kind of laid no, down. That was, it's actually a burpee. Oh, it's burpee? Mm -hmm. Okay, it's burpee. Sorry. I'm sorry. He's the one who handles where we get the seeds. Um, we actually deleted it for us because we didn't find it to be as productive as we were looking for. Yeah, and... I don't know. You know, we had other ones around it, too. Um, it might have uh, intermingled some, you know. Uh, but I didn't... I expected it to be a little bit more bushy. Yeah, taller. We expected mm -hmm. it to be taller and more like a tree. But if you, like, have a small stake, you could yep. stake that up. And that might actually be a very good option for somebody with a small space. Yes. Just to kind of think outside the box. They are making so many new variations out there. Don't just look at your local Walmart, Tractor Supply, Dollar. Go look at these websites. Look at these places. Yes, they're going to lure you with other things. Hey, go sign up. You know, there's so, just type in seed catalog, you know, and have a few places send you some. You know, there, there's so many that still does the seed catalogs. You know, a lot of them are still going away from it, going more online. But there's still some, if you're interested in it that way, uh, that you can find some, you know. I will say, you know, some of the places we've bought from in the past um, have have gone away. You know, Henry's was one that we used to buy a lot of stuff from that, you know, went under. They had really good deals. Had really good deals on stuff and where most of our apricots came from as well. Um, and then, you know, like Haas, they don't do a, a seed catalog, but... Um, they have some amazing varieties. They've got some, some really good varieties, so... Yeah, definitely, but you also want to make sure you're looking at this to meet your needs and meet your costs. You do not want to overspend here, so you have to be very, very careful. Um, another area where you can become financially independent by being self-reliant is electricity. Yeah, and, you know, you're like, hey, you can't get, well, you might not ever get 100% off, but unless you're off-grid and you really have to, you know, um, then you have to, you know, do your calculations a little bit more, you know, look more specifically. But you can set yourself up, you know, a little solar setup uh, with some battery uh, packs um, or set your own batteries, you know, and be able to provide yourself, you know, some electricity on some major items at least, you know. Uh, if nothing else, it's a replacement for 
gas generator. So, you know, in the winter time that yeah, I can't make it out to get the gas or I don't have enough stored up. It's a backup for that as well. They have smaller systems that yep. are plug and play. Yep. Under the Median talks about this all the time. Um, he's really into this, <laughs> like mm -hmm. Aaron is, and they really focus on this. And that's actually one of the things that I think inspired Aaron um, to be more proactive in getting us set up with some solar as well. So that way we can actually, we, we're taking it a bit further for us because we have greater needs for, for solar electricity. Yeah, yeah. We're not in a city, so our power outage times are going to be days compared to probably hours and not only that it's getting more more expensive so we're trying to yes. cut that cost so it's going to save us some money long term and also um the system we have chosen is not one that has to be regulated by anybody either now you do have to be careful because you could think you're getting financially dependent independent by going solar but i've been hearing a these lot, stories. A lot of people doing leases or loans. Loans. $60,000. Yeah, you can go build your own system, you know, for. Like 10. 10. <laughs> 15. Uh, right. And a lot of them now, too, um, these companies want to hook you onto the grid, which means if you're hooked onto the grid, you're, you're making money back from selling your solar to the solar companies, but. When that power goes off, you don't have any power. This was a concern for us. And your system might be different if you were on that. Well, but... They've started to come out with some new systems now that um, can switch between off-grid and on-grid. So those would be the type of things, but they're more expensive as well. So just know all your avenues and be careful. You don't want it to become financially but dependent trying to be self-reliant. Yeah. This is really important here. Hunting in springs for water. So hunting is a big one, especially around here. Yeah. So, um, I mean, you know, that's, think about it, providing your, your family with more food, you know, providing it with meat, uh, you know, whether it's squirrels, um, deer, turkey, you know, if you're living out, uh, out West, you know, some elk, um, mule deer, you know, some, some heavier meat, uh, uh, definitely out there that I wish um, we had back in this area. Um, but, you know, stuff like this can, you know, supplement, um, you know, your food source. Absolutely. Deer meat uh, is, is a really big staple for me. Not so much yeah. for Aaron. Aaron could do it. He could go vegan. He really could. I could not. I need to have meat. Um but um, deer meat is like a really big staple, especially um, this year. I'm hoping to get quite a bit of jerky put away. Yeah, um, I, I will say, you know, from the deer perspective or um, having, some, having some meat available, a lot of areas, even in cities now, are allowing uh, bow hunting because they're overrun with deer. Some of them are allowing multiple per day. Oh, wow. Look at your area. Look at your place you're in. You know, some of the rules. Some states, you don't have to have a license if you hunt on your own land. You know, look at this type of stuff. And if nothing else, hey, you live in the city. Go buy yourself a bow. Learn how to shoot it, you know. Have some extra meat on the table for your family. So definitely an option. Springs, kind of know your area if you have those available know, for you for water. Yeah, like know what's, you know, what's around it too, you know. Uh, make sure you're not too far downstream and somebody's got like cows or something, you know, on that stream. For, uh, make sure you safe. can access it safely. Like mm -hmm. if it's surrounded by poison ivy, like Eric couldn't get into that. He, he yep. would, there, it would not be worth him getting to that water source for what it would do to him afterwards because it would put him down it would yeah. put him down yeah. so you kind of just need to know but they can be a, a source of you know security uh, of security yeah and, and free water you know whether um, if you're on city and you need to do a lot of canning mm -hmm. or anything like that and they always say like in this area everybody gets spring water to can it like yes. for yes. pickles like you you will see a line at a spring down here because they're getting that water you know it's pickle season yeah when well, you see three or four cars over here in a line um 
Now that line's becoming shorter because, because most people ain't doing it anymore. Not around here. They don't want to. <laughs> it's everybody's, you know, to the comfort. Yep. Uh, don't want to put in the hard work to, you know, get yourself more financially independent. Um, repurpose everything as much as you can. Um, everything has a new life. Compost. So we, I have a different compost system that a lot of people might disagree with. But it works really well for us. So I don't like having, I remember my mom and papa had, you remember papa's, he had this big old bowl next to the sink, a huge metal bowl. And that's where he'd put all the scraps and they'd wait till it got full and they'd take it out. And it always bothered me. I never liked the food scrap bowl being out. So I'm very particular about this. If it's out at night, it has to go up to the compost bin, which we don't like to do at night because we do have critters. Um, and it's nothing to see That's a raccoon. animals for people who don't know what critters is. <laughs> so we have a few critters that could be around. Um, but if I don't have enough to take out, I'm not going to make Aaron go out for a couple of eggshells or a couple of coffee grounds. I just stick it in the refrigerator and it waits till it's full and then he takes it out yep. and it works really well for us. But we repurpose as much of that stuff as we can into our compost bin. Yeah. And you know, whether it's wood, tin, anything, parts, you know, think about it this way that, you know, back in, back in the times, everybody, you know, you just found a new use for something or rebuild it or, you know, repurposed it. And that's what you got to look out now is, you know, how can you make all this, you know, from frugality standpoint, hey, if somebody's got some free tin, go pick it up. You're going to have many uses for free tin. Hey, look here, here's some old two by four that's got a few nails in them. Hey, take an angle grinder Cut them off. to those nails, repurpose that wood. It's, it's so easy. It's so easy. Don't just throw something away because you can't see use for it right now. Now, we're not saying keep trash. Not saying be a hoarder. We're not saying be a hoarder. <laughs> I like how he's the one saying that. <laughs> what we're saying is your basic things like fencing, even if it's kind of a small piece, you can always use it for patching. You need to have a designated area for this if you have room because it's going to get like instead of you having to go buy something you might have something that could work for you right now right now it's going to fix your problem right now just go ahead and use it yep. instead of having to go keep buying items to try to find another way to use it you're really trying to save that cash not have to go out because you're not only just paying the cash for the item you're paying the cash to go get it mm -hmm. that's costing you time it's costing you effort it's costing you energy or you have to wait a couple of days for Amazon to deliver whatever it is you need delivered. So just be very mindful and thoughtful on this. But everything has another life. Always. Yeah. yeah. Debt free. Now, a lot of people are like, well, how's this being self-reliant? You have extra money to do what you need to do. You own Your own yourself. Land. On you, well, except for the taxes. Except for the which, taxes. You know. You, it's yours. It's yours. They can't take it away unless you don't pay your taxes. And the taxes are a lot cheaper. Than a whole home. Than. Or land. They're probably about the same cost as most people's mortgages. The annual taxes, depending on depends where you live. what state. Depending on where you live. Yeah. And I understand there's some places where the taxes are crazy high. Yeah. Um, like New York. California. Um, yeah. You know. Those, those type of states. Uh, talking to one of my friends, you know, he made sure to show his Tennessee tax bill to his New York buddies and be like, look here, and this includes trash pickup, you know, type of thing. And they were like, that's how much we pay for trash pickup for what you're paying for a whole house. Thing. Yeah. I it, it mean, it's crazy. So we get that. We completely yeah. understand. But it's still probably cheaper than your overall mortgage for most most of the time was all in general and you can save that cash up and have that cash built up if you if you're in dire straits it's like part of your emergency fund is pay your taxes mm -hmm. every year um but you have that cash set aside and nobody owns your home but you 
Yeah. I mean, there is such freedom. Nobody owns your vehicle. They can't come get, repossess it. It's yours. And being debt free just, I feel like, changes your perspective because we've been in debt. We've been debt free. And we are so close to being debt free. Like, I can already feel my perspective shifting to that debt free lifestyle because I'm ready. I'm so ready. And I think Aaron is too. Mm. That it, it's just shifting. And that it, you, you can't ask for a better form of self reliance because if you do have job loss, something like that, something dire, you have you you have less you have to worry about if you are debt free. Yeah, yeah. Um, I will also say that you know from a self reliance perspective, you know we were talking about the skills that you learned and everything like that that can also turn into a side hustle. Uh, for you that, um, you know, from a frugality standpoint, that's more money coming in uh, that you're, you know, learning from those skills as well. Be your own boss. Exactly. So how much more self-reliant can you be when you're not reliant on a Anybody. company? To, they can fire you at any time. They can hire somebody to replace you. They can, they dictate your wages, your insurance, everything. How, how much more reliant can you get on yourself to be your own boss? Yeah. So that's, and, that's probably your ultimate um, self-reliance mm -hmm. um, perspective. Yep, debt-free and being your own boss. Yeah. I mean, it really is. It's, that's the goal. That's what every homesteader wants to do. We want to have our homestead provide us income. Some way, somehow. It might not be right now. It might be in the future. However, it's going to help us push the needle forward. That is the goal. Yeah, and a good example. So, Homestead Rescue, if you've ever watched it. Okay. What is one of the key things that they're always looking at? Food, water, and a way to keep you on the homestead. Which is usually... A business or something that you can use to make money to keep the homestead running might not work out for everybody yep. but that's always a goal is to keep you working and moving forward and to really try to find a way to help you enhance your homestead lifestyle because this is a lifestyle we've chosen to live we've chosen this and part of being a homesteader is being reliant on ourselves and that means money food Water. all the stuff that yep. you need to survive day to day. And money is a part of this. And I hate to say it, but a lot of people say, well, money make, doesn't make the world go round. I'm sorry. Unfortunately, it does. unfortunately, since the early um, 1900s, it, it, it has. You know. It, this is the world we live in today. And. It's, I mean, there's not as much bartering that goes on. There's not as much trading, you know, that goes on um, as there used to be for, you know, your, your goods and necessities. Well, and not only that, most of the things that you have to do require a cash payment of some sort. You have to use a check. Or cash, well, something to my, a lot of places not accepting checks anymore. So. <laughs> to pay your taxes, they're not going to accept a payment of corn. That's that's true. I'm just, I mean, I mean, this is realistic, and we will give you a healthy dose of reality. I'm sorry. <laughs> and that's true, though. You know, like a lot of the doctors back in the day, they used to accept take food, take food as a form of payment. Okay, they weren't probably financially, you know, good, good off, but they had one of their basic necessities come from providing health care. They were able to supplement yep. through bartering their services through, through the community. Yep. You don't have that anymore. You have a broken health care system. We know ours is as broken as it gets when it makes the national news. Yeah. <laughs> um, a broken healthcare system that is more focused on keeping you unhealthy <laughs> compared to healthy. <laughs> it feels like mm. um, when you. I mean, it just it just seems like everything is just it all revolves around the dollar. And as much as we try to push out of this circle, um, break the cycle. 
I don't think it can be broken because it's so ingrained and so entrenched in how we do things. And it's also part of being a capitalist society. It, it is. It really is. And that's I, what we want, but we have to come to terms with the fact that... The only way to almost get almost completely free, which you couldn't because of the taxes, is a very well-versed community where you're, you know, you got a doctor, you've got a veterinarian, you've got... You know, every little thing that you need, an electrician, let's say, you know, for your electrical um, setups, etc., which is almost impossible to build everything. Yeah. It, there's a lot you have to think about. And the goal is for us, we know we can't do it all. Yeah. We have tried, and it's not possible. Um, we've tried and failed, successfully failed, <laughs> very, very badly. <laughs> um so it is just one of those things that we've come to terms with. But what we are working on are the things we know we can change. The things that we find to be more important to us. The things that are more for us to focus on. And changing our reliance from outside sources on those few things to internal. And then how do we make sure we're doing this the most cost effective are also ways to save us money. Which is why we believe self-reliance is a principle yep. of frugality. Yeah. Any any final thoughts based that upon that? Mine. That's what I was gonna say. That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mine is you know th think about from self reliance perspective other ways of providing food, water, uh, any of the basic necessities that um, you can provide through hunting, foraging, or um, um, through um, you know. Digging your own spring, even if you can. And if you're foraging, and we're thinking rule, like, so you have to be careful. Yeah, don't, I'm not talking about foraging out of the neighbor's garden, you know. <laughs> but, well, not only that, but if you are going out foraging and you don't know what you're looking at, please make sure you do your research. Yeah. Don't eat things you cannot identify. and You know by valid, good source that these are edible and you can eat them or use them. We don't want to say, oh, well, Aaron and Julia told me to do this and it sent me to the hospital. That's not what we're wanting you to do. <laughs> we want you to stay happy, whole, and healthy. Yeah. Um, you know, if you got any comments, anything you want to send over, you can either leave them below in the comments or send them over to thecannycouple at yahoo.com. Make sure to go over and check out our link tree, which has the links to all of our other content, you know, um, from where we're on Facebook, where we're on Noster, anything like that. You can find links to those as well. And as always, thank you for joining us on Rural Reliance with the Candy Couple, where we work hard, live simple, and enjoy life. Have a wonderful day.